Greetings, everybody. Uh, my name is Randy Gerdner, and I want to start off today by telling you a quick little story. Um, I'm a teacher, and so my photo is on the website, my school website, places like that. I'm around on the web. And one day, I received an email from a colleague in New York City, and my colleague said, you have a twin. And she sent me the link to a video. And apparently, she teaches with a teacher in New York City who looks exactly like me. Maybe. I don't know. You know, I think I'm pretty unique looking. Is he good looking, actually? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but this teacher sent me video. Okay, And what I would like to do is play that video for you. Now, keep in mind, I do not know this man. I have never met him. He found me on the internet, and he sent me this. So have a look at what he sent. I'll play it as is. What we have here is basically this. Um, he sent this video to me. He thinks I look like him, and he sent me a video from the future which is this. You'll see it in just a second here. It, this was suggested by one of his students. So he's talking to me and he says, uh, Randy, I am you from the future. And I have a few things to tell you before they arrive. First thing I need to tell you is buy Google. Don't ask what it is, just buy Google. And the second thing he said, see there were people coming to him then. And he said, whatever you do, don't go to And he said to me, we await your response. Okay, So he didn't know who I was. So when you challenge me in such a way, you have to be prepared for what I'm going to do in return. He doesn't know what I'm going to do in return. He thought he's a very clever teacher. He does IB chemistry videos. And apparently, these chemistry videos are taught around the world. People use them all the time. Um, and he's very clever in his videos, and he's quite funny. But he met his match. And I made a response video. But before I tell you what that response video is, I want to talk to you about a few things. Everyone knows him, Albert Einstein, a brilliant guy. Um, and I found this story on a website the other day called brainpickings.org. And I love the story. And it, it is very relevant to what we're talking about today, or what I'm going to be talking about. Um, Albert Einstein used to respond to letters from people, and he would respond personally. So sometimes people would send him letters and ask him questions. And a woman named Mary Block, who was a freshman at Oberlin College in 1951, wrote him a letter. It was just after uh, World War II, and she was feeling a bit uh, sad you know, about the events that had happened over the last few years. Um, and she asked him a very simple question in the letter. And the question was, why are we alive? And he wrote back to her. And I have a copy of the letter here. He wrote, Dear Ms. Block, the question why in the human sphere is easy to answer. To create satisfaction for ourselves and for other people. In the extra human sphere, the question has no meaning. And I love the notion of that. We are here to create satisfaction for ourselves and for other people. And that leads a little bit to what I want to talk about today and why I do what I do. Um, I'm talking about storytelling. Okay. I'm a writer. I write middle grade fiction books. I wrote a book called Boy McCoy and the Perpetual Motion Machine. I did a graphic novel called Boy McCoy and the Atomic Baby from Mars. They're for kids, don't worry. Um, I wrote a Hulk comic book, just one, Hulk Smash Christmas. And I do cartoons, things like that. I did uh, a bunch of cartoons about my experience as a teenager. And I was sending them and putting them on the internet, things like that. Um, and what I do on a daily basis is I write. I tell stories all the time, uh, whether it's through drawing, whether it's through filmmaking or whether it's through uh, writing. And 
One of the things that I do, I'm obsessive compulsive about it, I write every single day. And you hear this um, from many people, you know, many writers, that you should write every day. Because writing is like um, drug or weightlifting. The more you do, the better you're going to get. So I would do this every day. I would make these cartoons every day before I would go to bed. I would draw these cartoons. I did one a day for 365 days. And then after that, I had uh, kids. Okay, I had two daughters. So I decided to do cartoons about them. And I did over 700 cartoons about my daughters. Okay, and I would sit in my journal and I would draw out the little squares. I got better at it because in the beginning I wouldn't use rulers because I was rebellious. Um, but over time I started using rulers and trying to document my kids' lives. And that leads to the overall idea of what I'm trying to talk about here is why do we do this? Why do I tell stories like this? And again, it's to create satisfaction for me and for others. Okay? Why do we tell stories? I, I like this picture. Um, why, do, why do we tell stories? Do you have photographic memory? Any of you have instant recall? If I were to ask you what you did yesterday, most of you would be able to tell me pretty quickly you know, and give me good detail. But if I were to ask you what you did a week ago, things might start to get a little bit messy. If I were to ask you what you were doing one year ago at this time, would you be able to tell me? Okay. And that leads to this notion of all of our memories, everything that we are, everything that we do is a story. Um, you don't have instant recall, so you can't remember everything that you've done. So when you don't remember everything that you've done, you kind of fill in the gaps. In our history, who we are is a story. Everything about your past is a story. And we live in a time where you are able to document your story more than ever. Okay? Through technology, uh, through publishing, through the internet. Um, if you're an artist, you record your, work, your life in some form or another. And what I want to tell you to do today is to tell some stories, no matter what. Everybody has something inside them that they want to talk about. Okay? And the reason why you want to talk about these things is because you will, A, create satisfaction for yourself, as Einstein said, and you'll create satisfaction for others. Okay? If I tell you the story of the cheerleader in eighth grade who asked me out and I didn't know it, and I talked to her that day at, at the soda shop and had a great conversation, and she kept asking me things, strange things. She would say, um, well, what are you doing this weekend? And I'd say, nothing. I don't do anything on the weekends. I just sit around my house. I'm really bored. And then later on in the conversation, she would ask, I'm not doing anything this weekend. What are you doing? Nothing. I don't do anything on the weekends. I just sit around. And then I would continue the conversation. And she asked me three times. And four months later, when Trudy, which was her name, didn't talk to me anymore, I thought, man, we had such a good conversation that day. And I had a friend come up to me and say, well, you know what? She asked you out that day. I said, what? She was asking you out, and you didn't respond. And she said, I didn't think about it. Okay. And the problem with that is, I didn't realize. Had someone told me, had someone, you know, broadened my horizons a little bit, I would have made that move. I would have had the courage to do this, but I didn't. I tell you that story because someone here in the audience may be in that situation. Maybe they have someone from afar that they admire all the time, and they want to ask them out or tell them that they like them. And when you sit in your own little world and don't communicate, and you don't read things, and you don't absorb knowledge, then at some point, you don't do what you need to do. And that's why I say you need to tell your story. My father died last year. My father was the ultimate redneck. He wore a cowboy hat, had snakeskin boots, the whole nine yards. I'm originally from Oklahoma. He had stories, okay? But he was a very stoic man. He was 69 years old when he died. He was a very stoic man. He never told us stories. Did my dad have a first love? Sure. Did he have any experiences like I had in eighth grade? 
no, because he never graduated from sixth grade. Be that as it may, he had stories to tell, and he never told them. And now that he has gone, those stories are gone. Your parents have stories. Your friends have stories. All of you have stories to tell. But you have to decide if you're going to tell those stories. And that's the biggest problem that people have. So whenever I tell people that I'm a writer, everybody says, oh, man, I have a great idea for a novel. But they don't write it. They just have an idea. And so what I want to encourage you guys to do today is to write that novel or make that comic book or make that movie, or paint that picture that you always wanted to paint. Because if you don't, your story and everything that makes you who you are will simply disappear. Does that make sense? Maybe. So just to end it, we're not going to have sound in this video today. But if you think back to the original video, me that's telling the story. I will narrate the story for you. Um, he sent me a warning for, from the future. So the next day, because I'm a storyteller, he did not know what he was getting into. So I made a video in response the next day, and I made it with my high school film class. We made this in 30 minutes. And it basically works like this. My class is sitting around bored, and I call them up. I could probably narrate this pretty good. Hey, guys, maybe. Come check this out. This guy from New York City made a video response to me to challenge me to make a video. So I'm telling my students about the video. And then there's a sound at the door. And I show up. And I say, don't watch the video. And then I say, we've already watched the video. He goes, whatever you do, don't watch the video. And I say, we've already watched the video. Oh, no. You watched the video? That's horrible. And I say, well, well what's wrong with watching the video? And I say to my students, we've got to go back further. And I say, where are you going? And we all run out in the hallway to go back further. And then there's another version of us at the bottom of the stairs. And I say, what are you doing there? And I say, to stop him from watching the video. And I say, we've already tried that. Oh, no, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I say to my students, we've got to go back further. So we all run out to go back further. And the man at the camera says his name, and he runs. Yet another version of us shows up and says, his name. <laughs> and we laugh wickedly. This guy had no idea what he was getting into in making a video with me. Um, just as a side note, this is my last year in Shanghai, and I went to a job fair in Bangkok. And as I was being interviewed for a job in Bangladesh, of all places, I walk into the interview, and there sitting across are the administrators from this new school that I would be uh, teaching at. And they're smiling at me. And they say, we saw the video. And I say, oh, that's interesting. Slightly embarrassed. That's, you know, I'm sure they're thinking, oh, that's what you do with your classmates? Um, and they said, we saw the video. And just so you know, the elementary principal was there. She said, uh, he's my brother-in-law. So we made yet another video in the interview and sent it to him. I'm telling you, this guy did not know what he was getting into. All right. Thank you for listening.